Number 18. A 0.45 kilogram hammer is moving horizontally at 7 meters per second when it strikes a nail and comes to rest after driving the nail 1 centimeter into a board. Letter A, calculate the duration of the impact. All right, so for letter A, basically they're asking us for time, right? And what do they tell us? Well, they tell us the mass, okay? They tell us also an initial velocity. Why do I know that's initial? Well, because depending upon how I'm framing, I mean, how I'm framing it is that uh, it's starting at seven meters per second and they're telling me it's coming to rest. So this is gonna be my final, uh, excuse me, my initial value and this will be my final value, all right? And they also told me uh, how far the nail gets driven into the board. But now remember that basically the change in speed from seven meters per second to zero is occurring over this distance, okay? Now that means that if I can figure out a mathematical relationship between initial velocity, final velocity, and displacement over this period, then I can find the time of that same period. Okay, has to be consistent. So initial velocity here is seven zero zero meters per second, said it was traveling horizontally. I'm assuming it's traveling to the right horizontally. The final velocity here of the hammer was zero, and the displacement is gonna be one centimeter, convert that to meters, move the decimal two places to the left or divide it by 100, so it's 0.01 meters. What's the relationship between these four variables? Think back to kinematics. We have the displacement being equal to one half multiplied by the final velocity plus the initial velocity all multiplied by the time. So the displacement here was 0.01 meters, right? That's equal to one half multiplied by the final, which was zero, plus the initial of seven, multiplied then by the time. So here we have 0.01, right, is equal to 3.5 times time, divide by the 3.5. And why is my pen working? And here we go, right? 0.01, 0.01 divided by 3.5. And we get a value, so the time of impact was gonna be point, uh, actually let me do scientific, all right? 2.86, so 2.86 times 10 raised to the negative, 10 raised to the negative three seconds. What's going on right now? There we go, okay. Okay, little trouble here. All right, so that is now the time, okay? So that's letter A. Now let's take a look at letter B. It says, what is the average force, right? What is the average force exerted on the nail? So I'm thinking about force, I'm thinking about times, right? I know there's also a change in momentum here, right? Because the object, they told us the mass and it had a change in velocity. So, oh, I'm thinking about this formula over here on the right-hand side that says the change in momentum or the impulse that is, is equal to the force applied multiplied by the time over which that force acts. So to find the force, you got to divide out the time, right? So force is essentially equal to change in, uh, I can't think of displacement, but that's momentum change in momentum divided by time. Expanding on the change in momentum, we can have the m multiplied by the final velocity minus the initial velocity, all divided by the time. So to find the force, we better know all four of these variables, and we do know all of them, right? The mass of the hammer is gonna be 0 0.45, 0 0.450. The final velocity of the hammer is zero. The uh, initial velocity of the hammer was seven meters per second. And I realize I barely have any space down here. One second, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry about that. I'm just gonna move this up a little bit. And then we're gonna take this value and divide out the time over which it took to change that hammer's momentum. So this is 2.86 times 10 to the minus three, okay? So I can now easily calculate the force and just by plugging this into the calculator, right? So 0.45 times negative seven divided by 2.86 times 10 to the minus three. And we get a negative, so one, yeah, 1 1.10 times 10 to the uh, third, right, newtons. Okay, so now let's think, so this is what? This is the force, right, that, um, that the nail exerted on the hammer, right? If you think about it, right, you gotta, man, my drawing's gonna be terrible here. Well, it's traveling horizontally, right? So you got a hammer, okay? You got a board here, and here's a, here's a nail. So the hammer's gonna come horizontally, right? 
and it's going to travel horizontally, hit the nail on into the board. Okay, so uh, the hammer though changes its momentum and there's a force that's going to change its momentum, right? It was traveling at seven meters per second and then it's at rest as soon as it hammers the nail in. So the force that changes that momentum is going to be pointing in the opposite direction, meaning that's the force that the nail exerts on the hammer. But remember, according to Newton's third law, for every force there's an equal but opposite force. So if the uh, force that the nail exerts on the hammer is going to be negative 1.1 times 10 to the 3 newtons, then the force that the hammer exerts on the nail is going to be positive 1.1 times 10 to the 3 newtons. Okay, and they want to know the average force exerted on the nail. So therefore, my answer here should be 1.10 times 10 to the 3rd. Okay, uh, positive. Now again, it depends on if I frame the hammer moving to the right or the left. I've talked about this many problems before. So, you know, uh, just leave it in terms of the positive answer. You should be fine. But uh, if you do have a picture, you got to be very specific. Uh, then make sure that make sure the signs work out according to the picture. So guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. Look forward to helping you in the next question. Have a great day.